I'm getting started on a new camper project today. This is a Dodge Ram van 2500. Super cute light blue. Uh, my goal today, hopefully, it's gonna be a long day, but I wanna get the vent fan installed, I wanna get the solar panels installed, and I wanna get the floor put in. So uh, we'll see how far I get. Uh, I'm doing a couple different things than I've done in the past. I have uploaded some uh, vent fan install videos on some other builds that I've done. So I'm not gonna be super detailed with it, but I am trying out some new things. This is where the vent fan is gonna go. So I have a box that's just like strapped up to the ceiling. And basically that's just going to um, collect all like the little metal bits and stuff. So I don't have to clean it up inside the van after, which would be really nice. Uh, and it's also interesting, this van, I don't know if they made like camper vans out of these vans right out of the factory, but it has this spot that's basically just like preset for the vent fan. So there's no like ribs there. It's just completely smooth. So it should be able to cut out really easy. Uh, and then I'll get that installed. I have my template. This is uh, 14 by 14 inches. So I'm just gonna draw that onto the roof and then put some butyl tape around the vent fan, drop that right on top, screw it in. Uh, should be pretty straightforward and quick. So let's do it. I'm just gonna eyeball where this needs to go because I should be able to center in this square pretty good. Also, it's October in Arizona and I'm covered in sweat. Which, to be fair, is why I moved here, but it has not cooled down yet. There we go. I'm also going to set up some cardboard around this as like a barrier uh, because I'm also going to like be shooting little metal bits all over the place. So to kind of minimize the cleanup for that, I'm just going to make a wall around it. That works so good. There's my box. Just caught it. And now I'm covered in sweat and little bits of metal, which is awesome. Let's get that cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna fit the vent fan in that hole real quick, just to make sure it fits no problem. Uh, Cause I don't wanna spray it with, uh, what's that called? Primer. Um, yeah, I don't wanna spray it with primer before testing that it fits because I might need to trim it a little or something. Looks good. Cleanup time. I should probably vacuum this, but this works all right for now. Get the bulk of the little metal bits. You don't want to leave these sitting on your roof because uh, if they get moisture on them, they could end up rusting. Another benefit of having that cardboard kind of rigged up in there, I don't have to worry about like over spraying or getting any of this primer on the inside of the van. I probably should have the rest of the van top covered, but I'm not super worried about it. I can't remember if I mentioned this, but I'm trying out a new uh, microphone today. Hopefully this audio comes out fine because I didn't really play with it too much uh, before getting started today. But next thing I'm gonna do is uh, put some butyl tape on the lip of the vent fan. That way it seals really nicely with the roof. And then uh, I'll also, you know, seal the outside of it um, just with some silicone. But this will ensure that no water gets through the roof. This is left over from my last project. And uh, it's a pretty thin butyl tape. It's like half an inch. Normally I get an inch, but for my last project, if I remember right, I was uh, kind of short on needing some more. And this is the quickest stuff I could get on Amazon. So this is what I'm using. So I'm just going around the edge twice to uh, ensure to cover the majority of this little flare piece. When I go to put this in the, like in through the hole, uh, the one thing that's important to note is the direction 
that the fan opens up because you always want the cap of your vent facing the back of the van. Okay. So cap facing the back would be that way. And let's make sure those wires don't get caught. And drop it right in. Beautiful. I'm going to pull out that, uh, that cardboard before I screw those in. I just want to see how it looks, make sure everything's okay. Make sure those wires aren't caught or anything. Yeah, look at all those shavings. Ah, looks clean. Let's get it screwed in and then uh, I'll seal the top and then seal this edge underneath as well. Just to make sure it's completely watertight. This is the best part right here. Beautiful. So I think next I'm actually going to put the solar panels up and then because uh, I'm also going to seal the the mounts on the solar panels. I'm going to put some silicone around those. So then I'll just silicone everything at once rather than doing that now and then again later. So let's get some solar panels up. We're gonna ignore how messy the garage is right now, but I have two of these solar panels. We've got one here, we've got another one here, and I've taped cardboard to the top of it. I haven't always done this in the past, but um, it's recommended by the manufacturer to keep it covered until they're plugged into a battery. And I don't know when exactly I'm gonna be doing that. So I'll get some tape on this one as well. And I already have the brackets on the back of these. These are just cheap brackets from Amazon. Um, I think you can get four of them. It's like five or six bucks, but those are just bolted on super simply. And most of the time people will use, I think it's called thread lock to keep the nuts on the bolts. I used E6000, which is just another, uh, it's like glue basically, but I use it for a lot of different things and it works well for this. Just stops that nut from potentially uh, coming off due to like vibrations from the band, whatever. So I'm gonna get butyl tape on these brackets, the same stuff that I put on the vent fan. And once I put the tape on the brackets, I need to, I'll take some of this paper and put it back on top of the tape. That way I, I'm able to kind of move it around on the roof and then I'll just pull the tape off right before I screw them into place. One of these panels will get mounted behind the vent fan and the other will be in front. And I don't love where the brackets are hitting. They're kind of like, in order to get it centered on the van, um, they're like in between, or not in between, but this dip in the van is like right between the screws. I don't know how I'm gonna line it up. I'm gonna throw the other panel up there though. The one thing I am missing is the cable inlet gland, uh, which is coming in the mail, should be here today. I gotta be able to run the wires into the van. So that'll go like right here basically. Hopefully you can see that. Um, in between the panels next to the vent fan. Looks like with this panel I'll have that same problem. Uh, these panels are actually two different sizes because I had one from my last project. I didn't use it for my last project obviously. And then I bought another one that was on sale. That was a better deal. Of course I went with that. Yeah, these brackets will actually sit flush because they're spaced differently than this panel back here. So that one will work out nice. But the one in the back, I gotta look at that again. I'm not sure how I wanna line it up. The painter's tape 
is definitely uh, not made to handle the heat, I don't think. It's not staying super great. But I already did my big uh, Home Depot run. So, I mean, if I need to get little things, it's fine. I don't need the van to go and pick stuff up. The van's just gonna be sitting here. So hopefully the cardboard stays on there until I'm ready to take it off. It is nice having the uh, Bluetooth microphone. It stays with me instead of the camera. So even if I'm not right in front of the camera, I can just keep talking. Not that I'm trying to be an ad for this company, but it's just convenient. Those are all screwed in. I'm nice and sweaty. Um, this is the one where I did have to gap it, but I'll make just make sure to get some good silicone under there and around those screws. Um, that one's fine, it's flush. And on the inside, I'll make sure to get some silicone on each of those points as well. Uh, just cause like I've mentioned, I just wanna be sure that those are completely watertight. The metal tap screws are pretty good at, uh, I mean, they're tight just as they are, but I'm still gonna make sure to get some sealant on them. And I think I'm gonna wait a little bit until the sun goes down some because the roof is very hot. So I need to get the inside swept out a little bit. I wanna get the floor in next. I thought about either the floor or the ceiling, but I am still waiting on that one piece for the solar panels, the, the gland for the cable inlet, or I guess that's what it's called. Yeah, cable inlet gland. Um, so I'm still gonna have to cut another small hole in the roof to put that in. Um, so I don't wanna start putting the ceiling up. So let's do the floor next. I have some plywood that I need to get cut out. Um, I am going to insulate under the floor just a half inch. A lot of times I don't do insulation in the floors of the low top vans just because it kills your headspace, like the interior height. But I think it'll be worth it. So I have some insulation board here that I will get into the van. And then the insulation board is a little bit easier because I can just kind of sharpie out where I need to cut it to go around like the wheel wells and there's like a vent there and I think that's like an AC unit or a heater or something so I'll make sure to cut around those so we can get it all the way to the wall and then I'll do the same thing with the plywood um, and can potentially use the insulation board as a stencil for the plywood so we'll see how that goes before I get the insulation in here um, there are some brackets that I want to get cut out which should go pretty quick and I think that's it everything else I'm just gonna have to kind of work around but let's get those cut. And let's get the insulation in. I have that first piece laying in here. I do want this to go all the way up against the edge of the wheel well right there, or not the wheel well, the, the step. And so I need to measure at this wheel well, the section that I need to cut out so that this whole piece can slide forward. And then, like I said before, I am gonna pull this back out and use it as a stencil for the plywood um, because it, the plywood can uh, be cut the exact same dimensions because it's also four by eight sheets. So it should be really easy to get in. I don't have this uh, footstep trim actually screwed in. So I'm just making sure to hold it where it's gonna go. I need that to go in three and three fourths inches. So then starting at the wheel well right here. Uh, three and three fourths. And then it looks like that goes all the way to the edge of the wheel well. So I'll just cut a section three and three fourths out right there. There we go. And let's slide the insulation over. I have it under this carpet. Um, I'm probably gonna trim a little bit more of the carpet, but I did want it to overlap the floor just a little bit. And I can worry about trimming it later because it's not a problem at all.
So for the wheel well, I need to cut probably about 10 inches. Mark where the wheel well starts. And then 10 inches. And for this one, looks like it's gonna be about seven inches. Now that I have all those sections marked, I should be able to just cut them out and slide that insulation board right into place. Looks like I need to trim up against the wall just a tiny bit. Um, otherwise, if I use this as a stencil for the wood, that same length is not gonna fit up against the wall because it is super tight. Those are all cut out and in there now. And I wasn't even paying attention, but that insulation piece is definitely not right side up how I wanted to do it. But oh well, um, it's already cut and I don't wanna use more. So it's fine just like that. So let's get those pulled out and traced onto the plywood. And then I'll get the plywood on top of that and screw it in. This big one should be the easiest to cut out since the uh, section that I'm cutting off is so small. I'm just gonna toss that right back in the van because um, it gets it out of the way and also I'm done with it. So just put it back in there. And I'm not worried about making that edge super smooth or anything because it's gonna have a uh, vinyl flooring on top of it. So it's, yeah, it doesn't need to be sanded. All right. And then before I cut that one out, I'm gonna draw the other one on the other side. These are all cut out, good to go now. See how easy this is to uh, slide these all into place. I don't know if it's better to stack them first or to just put the insulation first and then the wood. But either way, it shouldn't be too complicated. It's not perfectly lined up, um, but that'll work out okay because it's just a small gap and it's gonna have vinyl on top of it. Um, and then also on this left side is where my bed frame is going to be. So it's going to cover up those imperfections. So I'm not worried about it at all. So now I'm going to um, get some metal tap screws, uh, screwed through the wood into the floor. Some people don't like doing that, whatever. So let's get that floor secured and then I'll get the vinyl down. I have this roll of vinyl that I'm gonna be putting in the van. And uh, I used to be able to get this at Home Depot, but they don't sell it anymore. So like half the other stuff that I use, I got it on Amazon. So let's get that unwrapped and pulled up here. Um, I'm actually just gonna staple it down and then build the rest of my everything on top of it. Um, and then all the edges will get like metal trims for I don't know what those are actually called, but it basically, it just protects the edge from getting like nicked and stuff. So I'm gonna get this unrolled and kind of set in place. Um, there is gonna be some extra material width wise because this isn't a custom cut piece. It's just a pre-cut roll that I was able to get. So it's gonna have a lot of excess. So again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. I'm gonna end up cutting it a second time to obviously trim around these different things. 
but I want it to reach all the way to the wall. So I don't want to cut it too much right at first. Decided to switch with the razor blade. Seemed a little bit easier. Um, I'll probably grab the scissors though for doing some more fine trimming. The sun's going down, which is nice because it's no longer over 100 degrees out, but I'm still sweating. Anyways, it's looking pretty good. I need to get it secured. Got all my scraps there. Um, I'm literally just going to use like a hand staple gun. Um, I'm going to get this edge first in the back. And then as I go, I kind of smooth it down. Uh, just to make sure there's no like ripples or anything because once it's stapled down I don't want to have to like pull it up and shift stuff. So try to do a good job the first time that way I don't have to change it The first edge is generally the easiest Because um, you can just get it lined up really well The trick is to smooth it out without like pulling on it Just like making sure it's flat and I'm doing these pretty close to the edge um, when I put the trim piece on there I will have, um, I can't remember if I got a half inch or a three quarter inch metal trim piece. So that'll actually cover up the staples and you won't see any of these. So there it is. Looks really nice. I need to cut a little bit more right there. Um, but I'll also have my kitchenette is going to come be on this left side and then kind of overlapping this doorway some. There'll be some uh, like storage cabinets. Um, I don't know how to say exactly what they'll be, but yeah, basically just uh, a storage area. Um, so that corner will actually be covered up so I'm not really worried about that right now but let's um I'm basically done for the day I think I'm going to clean up and uh kind of get things ready for tomorrow I do have some other things going on tonight so I'm not going to work all the way down until I'm out of daylight but not bad for a single day of work I was pretty lazy honestly I took a lot of breaks <laughs> went inside a lot because it was hot out but I'm excited for this camper it's going to be sweet and I have some, uh, I guess, new designs that I've been working on for it. Basically, every, every camper I do is a little bit different, um, which I enjoy. I like coming up with uh, unique designs and trying out new things. So stay tuned to see how this turns out and uh, should be pretty sweet.